It's 5.45 p.m., which means it's time for BCTV's Nightly News Roundup. I'm Roland Boyden. It's show 5.45 Live. Let's take a look at what's coming up on deck tonight. All right. Well, we'll start uh, with FEMA news. Vermont State Hospital might not uh, get that $43 million from the feds. Those VY protesters we talked about uh, from the Shut It Down Affinity Group did get a guilty sentence. We'll get the full report there. And they're lighting up the tree in downtown. Uh, we're going to go live there. There's also a uh, Vermont State Nuclear Advisory Panel where uh, some of those protesters mentioned just moments ago uh, showed up as well to voice their concerns. We'll get all that footage in addition. Uh, all that and more. So if you've got the time and the attention span, make sure you uh, give us a chance. Stick with us right here on 545 Live. And welcome back to this November 30th, 2012 edition of 545 Live. I'm Roland Boyd, and I'll be taking you through the next few minutes into the regularly scheduled 6 o'clock news. We'll get you some of the local updates. Uh, in uh, addition to all the uh, world news you'll get uh, a little bit later. All right, uh, that's footage we're looking at of the uh, downtown Plenty Park Christmas tree uh, going in, or holiday tree, courtesy of Building a Better Brattleboro. What's that going on over there? I think... I might have uh, somebody to join me at the desk, which is good to do a little bit of the uh, the reading here for this edition. I was just talking about that uh, Planty Park tree lighting ceremony going ceremony? on. Oh, well, uh, not the ribbon cutting. The, the uh, lighting up the tree there. So uh, we'll talk about that in just a second. I just saw um, Frederick down there as I came up through. Very cool. So we'll be getting all the footage. B roll. Uh, in addition, we uh, want to briefly mention that the co-op received a, uh, a national award for sustainability uh, for building the work they did on their project. That's from the EPA. All right, let's see if we can uh, get into our next story here. See where it says, we'll, we'll start, start with, with six, the six wo women. There you go. That's, uh, that's where I was thinking we'd start. So why don't we, uh, uh, I'll turn this one over to you. All right. We'll start with six women of the Shut It Down Affinity Group whose ages 64 to 93 have drawn additional national attention to their anti-Vermont Yankee protests, were found guilty of unlawful trespass by a jury Tuesday after the state's attorney surprised the community with the announcement that they would file charges against the women for the first time in the more than two decades of protest and arrest, with Wyndham County State's Attorney Scott Brown citing the time severity citing the severity of the occupying police resources just two days after hurricane irene as the cause for prosecution after the women chained themselves to the gates of the vermont yankee power plant last week let's take a oh look. last august Sorry last august that. yeah that's uh the uh the piece of it all the way back to a year ago but it was mm -hmm. uh directly after irene which is uh where the trial uh, was last week yes indeed uh, let's take a look at the footage courtesy of our uh, longtime content specialist, Maria Dominguez. This is a very important issue, yeah. and the court should recognize that and not participate in this ridiculous uh, uh, trial about trespass. We were found guilty, and since our standard is that we are already doing community service, we refuse to, pay, to do more community service or to pay a fine. So now we're trying to find out what's happening after that. And with the jail was the thing. Guilty again, Francis. Thank you. Welcome back to 545 Live. Joe broadcasting from downtown. You can see uh, the uh, somewhat rough downtown traffic behind us. There's our traffic report right there, courtesy of uh, the artist loft in downtown. All right, let's uh, move on here, Joe, and uh, talk a little bit more about those protesters here. Let's go into my close-up for a moment. I'll see if I can read this. Can you see it? And a few teleprompter issues. Despite protest, uh, uh, protester Hattie Nestle's specific request for jail time. There we go. Despite protester Hattie Nestle's specific request for jail time, the women uh, were merely fined three hundred and fifty dollars each. Fine each member of the group has now publicly refused to pay. Um, and uh, we'll just jump back and say they were back in action last night with uh, lending their unmistakable presence to uh, last night's Vermont State Nuclear Advisory Panel meeting with the Vermont Agency of Natural Resources uh, 
to uh, talk with the participants of the community and people uh, on the VSNAP panel uh, to sort through the details of Vermont Yankees expired discharge permit issuance that uh, landed the plant's owners uh, in environmental court, going all the way up through the Supreme Court. Again, content specialist Maria Dominguez was on the scene uh, to get us all the latest footage. We will be looking at some concerns and some arguments about the, the previous hydrothermal modeling and the formula that's used to determine compliance. When you get the data from the plant, uh, or from the stations rather, what's the process if there is a finding that it was out of compliance for a period of time, or, or I guess has that happened, and if so, what's the process thereafter? There are two enforcement, um, potential enforcement um, mechanisms that the agency can use. We have an environmental enforcement statute, and then if it's serious enough, if it's a serious violation, we can refer it to the AG's office in the context of the renewal permit. We're coming with no evidence going forward. And the plan's still running, no matter what the state has said or done, the plan is still running. Agency of National Resources Representative Catherine Guessing at last night's VSNAP meeting in Brattleboro. According to Guessing, June 2014 is the new deadline for issuance of the permit. She gave no indicators as to whether or not Vermont Yankee would in fact qualify at that point, but she revealed that new federal regulations could greatly reduce the plant's water intake from the Connecticut and bar the discharge of hot water back into the river altogether. Uh, in addition, news announced last night, uh uh, Liz Miller, who's now uh, spent a year at the head of the v VSNAP um, and Department of Pub Public Service, uh, announced that she would be stepping down as commissioner and introduced uh, the newest commissioner at that meeting. I am currently deputy secretary of the Agency of Natural Resources, so this is a change for me, but not, uh, not a huge change, and I look forward to working on the energy issues. Well, despite Governor Peter Shumlin's declaration after Hurricane Irene that the damage sustained by the state hospital in Waterbury during Irene would yield Vermont an opportunity to get patients out of what he called inhumane conditions, FEMA has now announced that they do not consider the damage to the hospital severe enough to warrant the nearly $40 million in federal funds once promised to the state to revamp their entire state hospital system. However, despite FEMA's surprise move to rescind the funds, construction at the Brattleboro Retreat to add, an to add and accommodate state hospital beds will continue. Uh, now we want to take a little flashback to uh, this post from Governor Shumlin uh, on his YouTube channel about uh, this difficult issue for the state to face. Here's my conclusion. FEMA will continue to work with us. We will continue to beat on them. We will get what Vermont deserves. We'll continue to push the insurance companies for the best outcome we can for Waterbury. But I am making the decision to push ahead. Governor Peter Shumlin talking about uh, this $43 million project, 90 of which was supposed to be paid for with federal funds, courtesy of FEMA. They've now uh, rescinded their offer, um, though the state does plan to move ahead some way, somehow. If you have a, a cool $43 million, Jeremy, you could pitch in. Oh. Hang on. Just Wait not, just not on you. <laughs> all right, let's talk Bernie while we're uh, getting all the latest off the web here from our state representatives. For that, uh, I'll again throw it over to you. Righto. Next, Lloyd Blankfein is the face of class warfare, or so says Bernie Sanders in his latest stand on the Senate floor, who called out the Goldman Sachs CEO after Social Security and welfare has come under severe attacks from some of Wall Street's top officers in Washington. Let's take a look at that clip as well. This is the CEO of Goldman Sachs. And now, with his huge wealth, he is coming here to Washington to lecture the American people on how we have got to cut Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid for tens of millions of Americans who are struggling now to keep their heads above water. All right, uh, you can catch the, that full video, full uh, um, dose of indignance from our uh, esteemed senator uh, by looking up Senator Sanders, all one word, uh, on YouTube.com. All right, once more, Joe, back to the script as we uh, get ready to head on out for this weekend, finish up well, the Well, uh, as they say, every here. day is a holiday in Brattleboro, or so says the tagline to Building a Better Brattleboro's official holiday season campaign, which is kicked off this week with a series of events that include a six-foot gingerbread man, 15-foot Christmas tree, and more back into the vault we go we'll take a look at a clip from last year's tree lighting coming up now 
welcome. Uh, my name is Andrea Livermore. I'm the executive director of Building a Better Brattleboro. And it's the holiday season again. Um, this is it. This is kick off to the holiday season. And in just a few minutes, and actually I'll give the sign and we will flip the switch and that means officially it's here. Okay, flip away. Uh, BABB hopes the campaign will, in an age of rampant internet purchasing, help urge residents to do their holiday shopping locally. Buy local, stay local. Do moving on, can. moving on, Joe. Live basketball coming up from the high school. We're getting into that season, and the hardworking students and instructors of BHS TV, which is uh, the high school's morning news advisory program, are getting ready to kick that off. Something I'm particularly excited oh, for. Uh, let's uh, check out some of the footage from last year. Three camera shoot will be beaming in live. Uh, this, uh, Three cameras? It's, they, wow. it's very intense. There it is, Wednesday, December 12th uh, at 7.15 p.m. Now uh, the uh, jump ball starts at uh, 7.30, but we like to cut to it a little bit early. Bill Holiday and WTSA's Tim Johnson will be there for the commentary, so we'll be sure to uh, get as much of that as we can for you. All right, time ticking down here on our broadcast, Joe, as we go Ooh. through an extended 5.45 Live for Friday. Just a, a few things to mention before we uh, head on out and enjoy the weekend. Uh, BUHS TV uh, and the community in general lost a, a phenomenal, phenomenal individual, Gary Blomgren, longtime art teacher, at, uh, at BUHS who then uh, made the transition five years ago to running something he really didn't know a whole lot about, which was television. He bravely stepped in and took over uh, the new BUHS TV program and, and really turned it around into something uh, worth viewing both uh, inside the school system and now on BCTV uh, four times a week. Four times a week uh, he got these kids together to uh, write a script get on camera. Um, he's going to be sorely missed. Uh, I know uh, not just by myself, but by uh, everyone that knew him. He was just a, a terrific individual. I Words fail me to describe uh, just how Indeed. fun it was to be around him uh, and uh, sort of uh, made it always made me feel more confident to go up there and just talk with him. He was one of those people that kind of radiated his energy uh, out to the people around him. So he will most certainly be missed. Let's take a look at uh, some of the fruits of his labor, which uh, includes some green screen work from the high school. This is today's uh, weather report. Weather. <laughs> um, today, there is a high of 30 and a low of 23. There is a 30% chance that it will snow, and winds today will be at five miles per hour. It's Friday, by the way. Yeah, today's Friday. It's Friday. Joseph, you've got, a, you've got a plug for us before we head on out and enjoy well, the weekend. The, Break it down uh, for us. What do we got? We've got the arts and crafts sale down at the Conrail Hill. There's over 60 artisans down there. Wow. And uh, this is the one weekend in the year when they open the whole place up. It's an open house. Everything's on sale. And you really, it, it, they have it for three days. And I'll tell you, to, to see them all, it would probably take you three days to do it. So I think it's, uh, I'm not sure of the hours. I don't know if you can catch it on the Ibrattaboro calendar. But it's on Ibrattaboro, their calendar, if you... Uh, Need to know what time, but it's throughout the entire day, basically. Uh, today, tomorrow, and Sunday. Terrific so opportunity. Plenty going on in Brattleboro this week, uh, this weekend, as uh, it often is around this time of year, getting ready for the holidays. Be sure to head downtown and check out that tree as well, uh, if you so choose. Joe, that's all I got. We better uh, turn it on over to BUHS TV the morning, uh, the high school's program, as they uh, often start at 6 They've uh, been kind enough to let us do a little bit of an extended edition here, but we'll turn him uh, back over to them. So, Joe, thanks for joining me at the desk. Help me uh, read through Traffic these jam. stories here. And uh, be sure to check in with us again this coming Tuesday, 5.45 p.m. right here on BCTV Channel 8. Night, everybody. Lloyd Blankfein is the CEO of Goldman Sachs. In 2006 and 2007, he was the highest price, highest paid executive on Wall Street, making over $125 million in total compensation. I find it literally beyond comprehension 